Okay, so we'll start again. General inspection, again, you wanna not draw attention to the fact that you're watching the patient breathe. So watching from the front through sort of a cycle, rise and fall, inspiration, expiration, looking from the posterior view. Then you want them to actually take a deep breath. So can you take a deep breath in for me and out? And again, making sure that the right side's doing what the left side's doing showing you that sort of the diaphragm and the chest wall is intact. And again, another deep breath in and out. Good. You're checking the patient's fingers, capillary refill. Can you go like that for me? Good. And you're checking to make sure there's not a diamond in between for um, clubbing. Then you are going to do palpation. So palpation, you're checking for, is it tender? You're checking on ribs and also some spaces between ribs to make sure that they're not tender. You're also checking for that sort of crepitus or the Rice Krispie type feeling. So across the front of the chest, is there tenderness? Around the side, squeezing the ribs. Posterior, again, sort of just pushing all the way across, making sure nothing is hurt, hurting. So does any of that hurt? Ask the patient, okay? Then, you are doing tactile fremitus should be next. So you're doing three spaces on the front, four spaces on the back. Make sure that the first spot on the front is up pretty high. So every time you feel my hands on your chest, say 99. 99, 99, 99. Okay, so three on each side on the front, four on each side on the back. Make sure that, the, the, that you are getting lateral on those last spots on the front and the back, okay? Then you're gonna do percussion, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're getting all the spots on the front, all the spots in the back, and then the last spots kind of wrap around laterally. You're doing the percussion and auscultation in the same number of spots on the front as you do on the back. No, no, I don't mean the same number as front and back. I mean, in percussion and auscultation, you're doing the same number. So on the front, you're doing a few less, you're doing 12. On the back, you're doing 14. So six down each side <laughs> on the front, seven down each side on the back. Percussion, the first spot that you percuss and auscultate is above the clavicle. So you're way up here. And then make sure that you're following the ladder and that you're between ribs as you go down. And then you do across the back, put your hands on your shoulders like to get the scapula out of the way, and then your zigzag pattern all the way down. And you make sure that you're between rib spaces when you do that, okay? When you have the patient go like this, spread the scapula out of the way, you have a lot more room to work with as you're percussing. Now you auscultate in the same pattern that you do um, percussion. So you're gonna listen in all of those spots. You have the patient breathe through an open mouth, so in and out through an open mouth when you feel my stethoscope. Okay, so by now, generally, patients need a break. So it's still not very many. You're making sure that you check in all of these spots. So again, 12 on the front, um, 14 on the back. Put your hands across your chest again. So again, up here in the back, your zigzag pattern across the chest, covering seven on each side. These last couple wrap around the side, okay? So that's percussion and auscultation. 
Then we'll do the diaphragmatic excursion, then we'll get to the special sound. So diaphragmatic excursion, I'm gonna have you swing your feet around this side so that that side can see. And then we'll repeat it. Once we're all done, we'll repeat it for you guys on this side. So it's gonna be the, the distance that the lung spans the difference between inspiration and expiration. So I already percussed in general down his back. So I kind of know that the end of the lungs is gonna be somewhere in here. So I'll have you put your hands on your chest again, spread the scapula out of the way. You can start here, you know there's gonna be lung tissue. And then what you want the patient to do is deep breath in and then out and hold it. So you know that I heard that you can breathe. The sound changed between here and here. And then when I was confirming to make sure that I wasn't in on a rib, move slightly down and slightly back up to make sure that yes, you were right. So you draw a line right here. And then you would start there and say, okay, take a deep breath in for me and then hold it. And then you can breathe. So I got about two more rib spaces before I then heard dull. So you draw a line here, the last one's here, you measure between the two. To be thorough, you would do the other side to make sure that the distance was the same, okay? So it's how far down the lungs expand between expiration and inspiration, and that's what you're measuring in diaphragmatic excursion. Then we'll do the special tests. I'll do them just on the back so that you can see them. So you do this if you hear something in the lungs. So say you heard wheezing or crackles, you would do the special tests. So first we're gonna do um, bronchophony. So what I want you to do is every time you feel my stethoscope, say 99. 99, 99, 99. And so you continue in all the lung fields, especially where you heard the abnormality but you should also be making sure that in normal tissue, it's, it's, it should be normal. So in bronchophony, he's saying 99. I should hear muffled 99 or you know a little bit lower if you hear anything at all. Then you do egophony. So every time you, hear, you feel my stethoscope, say E. And again, you do those in all the spots, especially where you heard the abnormality and where you didn't to compare the two. Normal is he says E and I hear E through the stethoscope. Abnormal is that I hear an A sound, okay? And then whisper pectoriloquy, which is the last one. I want you to whisper one, two, three every time you feel my stethoscope. Same thing, same pattern. Do it the sort of same, um, way you should either not hear anything at all or a super muffled voice i can hear it from the outside not from the inside so i can hear his voice in my ears with the stethoscope but i can't actually hear the whisper one two three in the actual stethoscope itself so that's normal abnormal is going to be that it's clearer or louder 